Yeah, Marcus, it uh, actually plays quite well with the uh, joypad. I mean, I got introduced to this genre on controller. Yeah. You remember that game, Knights of the Old Republic, that some people kind of liked and then keep talking about how much they want a remake of it and then start talking about how much they don't want it to play like Knights of the Old Republic? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the real ones who actually understood I was playing a role-playing game and wasn't, did not desire to have Jedi Fallen Order, but with more dialogue choices, you know? And that's, that seems to be what everyone was, was gunning for, and shocking, the Knights of the Old Republic remake got indefinitely shelved, because I don't think you can make that type of game like that. It just, you would, the combat system wouldn't allow it, otherwise it would have to be broken. Yeah, and, and I know, and I think that if KOTOR did get a remake, it should pretty much play like this, where, hey, you've got, you got a person to be moving around, you can move the camera, you can zoom the camera out and see the full tactical view, which you could not do in Night's the Old Republic. I actually think this game plays quite well with a controller. It's just, it does, there is a bit of a learning curve. It's not like, hey, I've got, I've got a dude that I'm walking around here. I guess I can just pull out my sword and start swinging. It, it does not work like that. I would recommend don't controller shame people on Baldur's Gate 3. I played 30 hours of this game in early access on mouse and keyboard and if it was terrible on controller, I would have I would have taken the time to to go and switch it. Sony wanted something more cinematic. Yeah, I mean, look, that's why the the thoughts that Sony maybe had a hand in funding this in order to get it a window of exclusivity on PS5, which is why the Xbox version hasn't really been announced yet, even though it was initially. I, I mean, not in a specific release date announced. But, I mean, I honestly don't think there's any reason this game can't run on Xbox Series S and X. I can run it on my Steam Deck, so... <laughs> I think they just, they have to bite the bullet and be like, I'm sorry, no split screen on Xbox, so... Yeah. We'll, we'll try to patch it in, but right now it's too hard for us to do on the S, so we gotta drop it. Or, get Microsoft to give them permission to just say, okay, it's, uh... I guess we'll get... Split screen co-op if you have a Series X. The co-op will be an X exclusive feature, but I think because Microsoft made a huge deal about never locking a feature away from the Series S and everything that you can do on the X from a feature standpoint, you can also do on the S. Resolution was not the only problem with any, okay. I just, I had, an, I had a revelation. I think I understand it now. So at the beginning of this generation, when we, well, I've, I've talked about this before, when we had every game like running at 60 FPS on the new consoles, and I was like, man, consoles, you finally did it. You made it so that every game runs really well on this system. And then the chorus started of, oh, but these games aren't, aren't totally unlocked for the power of the PS5. So I guess, I guess that means they're bad and they run. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They're designed for the, they're designed to be functional on the PS4, not the best experience, functional. I can, uh, there are games like, uh, take for example, Jedi, Jedi Survivor right now is now being downported back to PS4 and Xbox One. How is that happening? If it's a game that they needed the true power of the next gen consoles to unlock the, and then it was still a port too. Like, I mean, it, it had issues on every console and apparently the PC port was total garbage, but they're like, oh yeah, now we're gonna put it on PS4 and Xbox One. What I mean by that is I think that Xbox designed the Series S and the Series X, assuming that every single game will be designed to run at 4K 60 FPS for the new consoles. That, or like 4K, up to 4K resolution, 60 FPS on the new consoles. I think more accurately, they could probably do 1440p checkerboarded because these consoles are not powerful enough to run things at 4K 60 consistently if you crank up the visuals to 11. Right, or if you're throwing in ray tracing, you have a $600 console, 600 in our country. Yeah, you have a $500 console, okay? You don't have a supercomputer, so you should not expect ray tracing to be a feature. I hardly use ray tracing on my computer that could decimate a PS5 from a raw power standpoint. The point is, I don't use ray tracing, hardly ever. You know why? It makes the games run like So that's a feature that me, an elite PC Master Race gamer who could be playing every single game that I own at 4K ray tracing maxed ultra settings if I wanted to play at 30 FPS, I choose to actually have my games play well. Which is why I don't understand 
the people who say, oh, frame rate, that doesn't matter. 30 FPS is totally fine. I'm like, it's not. It, it, it isn't. It isn't. 30 FPS is tolerable if it's the only choice. And that's the only thing I'm going to give it. Because I know that the argument against it is going to be, oh, well, I mean, you like Tears of the Kingdom and it was 30. Yeah. It was also brilliantly designed. It had unbelievable game design. And I didn't think it would. I, was, I wasn't, even, wasn't even really expecting that Tears of the Kingdom would impress me as much as it is. If anything, I was going into it ultra skeptical. I was like, oh, well, you know, I like Breath of the Wild, but I don't need more Breath of the Wild. I don't need Breath of the Wild DLC for 80 Canadian dollars, which is what, it, oh, sorry, 90. 93.49 is what, um, Breath, uh, not Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was 80, but <laughs> 79, 89.99 or 93.49 now, because it's gone up by an extra 3.50 which is like okay thank you canada i guess <laughs> i guess that's the math working out on our exchange rate be like you guys kind of rounded down on the msrps just a little like <laughs> at least made it not seem like a total kick in the balls that we're now into the triple digits every single time we want to buy a new release game like i i don't know man i i just i think that microsoft was under the assumption that developers would be designing in the pocket this generation and make it so that guaranteed the ps5 and the xbox series x can run things at 4k 60 or at least checkerboarded up to 4k 60 from 1440p that would make sense that if the only functional difference between a series x and a series x is the gpu nothing else just the gpu and only the gpu most things that are running at 60 fps on um at 4k on an xbox series x will run at 1440p 60 fps or almost assuredly 1080p 60 fps now i mean you say oh 1080p got, uh, no no 1080p is fine all of my streams if you ever think the gameplay on my streams looks nice every single one of these is 1080p because x Girl and I upgraded our bandwidth so that we could stream in 1080p. This is not a bad resolution. It's not low resolution. It's absolutely playable. And for the people who say 30 FPS is absolutely playable, I'd be like, yeah. But if I could take the choice between 60 at 1080p and 4K 30, get the f out of here with 4K 30. The thing is, what I didn't realize, and I'm realizing now, is that that's what was happening. <laughs> that they were designing games that could run a 1080p 60 on the series s effectively or that that point and all of those games could run at 4k 60 on series x because it was just amping up the resolution maybe throwing in some upscaling tricks and you know doing what you got to do to get the games filling out all the lines of the 4k tv is effectively the goal you know so with something like dlss or fsr you can do that pretty easily and uh, generally if you're not going too hard with it it looks pretty good i think it's possible that microsoft was like oh man all these games are having no problem running at 4k 60 and look at look at some of them they look amazing why yeah, so we can just sell a cheaper version of this console with a less powerful GPU, and boom, we, we've got it. It's like we've got our two, our split generation that we can do to make it a low, low cost option for someone to get into next gen gaming. Cool. I think now the problem is they're like, okay, yeah, we're not going to develop in the pocket. We're going to try to squeeze every last drop of fidelity, not performance. So squeezing every last drop, generally when fanboys are talking about it, you're just talking about the games looking nicer in screenshots. I hope that you realize that. That is all you're talking about. Don't give me this bullshit about like, no, I need the games to be more complexly designed and be able to pull things off that were never possible. No, you don't you don't like playing those type of games lots of those games are out there there are extremely complex games they're all pc games that you call people nerds for liking <laughs> like solaris or arguably Baldur's Gate 3. i have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of ponies who are gonna be pretty pissed that this game isn't like an action game because they'll see footage of me walking around like this and be like oh man that looks amazing do you see those light rays do you see all those characters look at the models look at the shadows it looks so good can't wait till this is on ps5 best game of the year and then they're gonna be like wait hold on that's not how i swing my sword oh, okay is it r1 oh hold on that's not how i swing my sword is it why that how do i swing my sword and it's like well, yeah it's not that type of game you're playing a very complex game that can run on a steam deck you know so it's oh man the complexity argument 
I was just like, you're lying. You're lying about you wanting games that are more complex and ambitious. You, you need them to look ultra pretty for you to accept them because there's, there's plenty of incredibly complex games, some of which are very, very good, which are in the market right now. You don't care about the ambition of the game unless that ambition includes, and the graphics are gonna look way better than anything you've ever seen in your life. They are gonna blow your mind, baby. And it's like, well, okay. How does it run? <laughs> it's like, yeah, locked 4K. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, I guess, the, the resolution it's running in, but how does it actually perform? Rock solid 30 FPS, man. Loads of motion blur. Looks exactly like 60. I'm like, no, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> that is that is very much not how that works. The series S argument is on its face wrong. When games run on PC on scale, many many games run on potato PCs at 720 and run like magic on 4K 120s $10,000 rig. Yes, yes. That's what I mean, it's not, it's not the ambition and complexity of the game design that you're talking about. Stop it. Because ultimately, I'd say the complexity in game design is honestly worlds, worlds more advanced in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is a game made on a 720p Android tablet, or 4.1. And yeah, the game design there is incredibly complex and there are essentially an, un, an ungodly amount of possible solutions to any given challenge. And they've created a sandbox that allows the player to express their creativity in shocking ways, shocking ways. And if, you're, if you don't believe me, right now, or maybe Classy Vigilante can throw it up on the screen. So right, right over there is a person who just made a, uh, oh crap, I'm not forgetting the name of the fighter. Oh my god, uh, one, of, one of the fighters from uh, Robotech, like, like the, the fighter jets, no, I'm, it's killing me. So the one with the skull is like the, not the main guy, but like the, oh god, I'm, I'm forgetting what the name of the thing is, but basically it's a, it's a fighter jet, it's like an F-14 that turns into a robot. They didn't use a mod, they used the systems of that game to create a Robotech mecha inside Tears of the Kingdom, which is functional. That's wild. Okay, that, that's insane. And that is the actually the kind of thing where it's like, wow, this is actually expanding what we can do with game design in some ways that are genuinely impressive. But you'll notice that the people coming from the, yeah, advanced means ultra good super HD 4K ray tracing graphics, and that is not what advanced means, everybody. That's not what advanced game design is. That, that's advanced artistry, artistry. And honestly, I 100% respect every single modeler and artist working in the game industry. I think they do an amazing job for the most part, even in games that don't look all that great or aren't running crazy, like this one. I mean, it's, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't look bad, obviously, but for a game that is not overly complex, like it's basically top-down, you know, like an isometric perspective, that the environments look pretty good. I guess the trees look crappy when you get close up to them, but when you do, you'll notice they're also becoming transparent so that you can see the player. And that feature could use a little work at this point. I think it's not 100% spot on, especially if you're playing like me, where we're, we're down in the third person mode for the majority of the time, as opposed to being up overhead. However, during the battles, yeah, I have to pan the camera out, absolutely. It's, <laughs> I can make it look cinematic as I'm exploring the world, and that's totally fine, but once it gets down to combat, time to play the game, I, I, I do choose function over aesthetics, and you should too, because especially if the game's difficult, that's what will prevent you from sounding like a little whining about needing easy modes and everything. Because if you actually learn how to play the games, most of them aren't that hard. Okay, th this one actually is quite hard. <laughs> but on tactician difficulty, or the classic difficulty, which I'm thinking was that, although I did have an easier time with this um, specific encounter from the angle that I took it in the early access, so maybe this is kind of somewhere between, maybe it's the classic difficulty, but it's a little better balanced. I'm on the balanced one right now because also I figured that would be the best one for streaming because it, it wouldn't just be a whole stream that's six hours long with me failing the same battle repeatedly until I finally crack the strategy because there was a lot of that. A lot of that in the early access. I, 
I was quick saving and quick loading like there's no tomorrow to the point that for me to have any chance to play it for the video I made I kind of need to do it while I was doing other things and luckily this game is pretty light and I had a very good computer so it's pretty easy to just alt tab over and boom keep playing and uh yeah I would do it like it comes it seems kind of crazy now because I would never hog this much of my VRAM again but I, I was like there was a night I, even in my video you see it when I'm playing Modern Warfare with like Jeremy and, and Josiah and Lethal Lightning and Uche rest in peace Uche good man I would alt tab over to Modern Warfare and then play a multiplayer cop match we're in the lobby waiting for the next match again alt tab let's try to kill these minotaurs and i beat the bosses that were stonewalling me while i was alt tabbing over from playing call of duty it was a nice little moment and this is how the ui changes when you play with the mouse and keyboard so you know you've got you got a little bit easier access to things and uh, it says your hotkey right there thank you everybody for watching this what is likely going to be a clip out video where i guess i did descend into talking about 30 fps versus 60 fps more but i think that the idea that these games would mostly be cross-gen and we'd just be running them perfectly on the next-gen consoles gave Microsoft the tip to be like, okay, make an affordable one so that these things aren't impossible to find and underprivileged people can still afford to play the new games, even if they're not playing them looking as nice. You know, like, or not underprivileged kids, but like kids whose parents are maybe aren't going to buy them a six hundred dollar console might buy them a three hundred dollar one. You know, like that's that, that's a reasonable. A reasonable thing to expect.